Hey everybody, I'm in the Ranger booth at CHA Creativation 2017 and we're going to talk with Tim Holtz in a couple minutes. He's going to do an oxide demo with these distress oxidings. I don't know if you can see behind me. So they look just like distress ink pads, but they have a silver side so you can tell the difference right away. And yes, I am ordering all of them. <laughs> anyway, let me introduce myself. I'm Margie Kemper. You can find me at margiekemper.com. It's a J in my name, M-A-R-J-I-E. And I'm a mixed media artist and designer and teacher. And I'm here at CHA as an attendee and a buyer. And I've been talking with Tim Holtz. He's wrapping up some demos right now. And he's going to show us what he can do with these great oxide inks. Hi, Marit. Thanks for saying hello. If you pop in for this video and you can let me know who you are, and where you're looking from, where you're watching from, that would be great. Yesterday, actually not yesterday, earlier today we had Australia in the house and Chile, which was awesome. So I won't be talking while Tim is demoing because I want the crowd around him to hear, but I'm going to turn the camera around and show you what's happening. And I will catch up with the comments after, okay folks? Thank you very much. Hang on, I'm going to turn you around. All right. So he just finished up one demo and he's going to work on some more. He's got a nice crowd here in the Ranger booth. Some gorgeous samples. Seeing friends over here. We've been looking at distress crayons, distress inks, distress oxide inks. Yes, distress magic. Oh, Marit from the Netherlands, wonderful. And Louisiana is in the house, all right. So again, if you're just tuning in, thanks for watching. If you're on the replay, welcome. I'm Margie Kemper, and I'm here at the Ranger booth at CHA in Phoenix with Tim Holtz, who's going to do a demo on the new Distressed Oxide ink pads. If you think your friends or peers would like this, please share it. You can do so by clicking the link at the bottom of the video. Also, if you click to like my page, you'll hopefully get notifications on future updates. Talk about some of the colors. I'm going to bring you in closer. Hey, everyone. Okay. Hey, Tim. So, Distress Oxide, that is the, the newest ink in the world of Distress, which I love. And for Distress being around for over 13 years, having something See, totally new. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. yeah. Old but new. Yeah. Um, Having something that is new in the ink line is very cool because Distress has evolved. We've had Distress as uh, an ink, a paint, a stain, a marker, a crayon, a glitter, an embossing powder, and all those different facets of Distress have been really cool. But to have another ink pad added to the line is really exciting because Distress Oxide is a dye and pigment ink fusion. It is a combination of both. And there's a lot of cool characteristics of this ink that no other ink can do. And that, to me, is what's fascinating. This has actually been years in development at Ranger, which is cool, um, because I had so many different characteristics that I wanted this to achieve that we just had to overcome a lot of interesting hurdles. Now, if you're familiar with Distress Ink, Distress Inks are a translucent dye that is reactive with water. Distress Oxides, they come in 12 of the Distress colors right now, are reactive with water, but they oxidize. So when you wet this, it actually creates this oxidized effect. It creates this white kind of chalky layer. And you can use these on a variety of surfaces. You can use these on light and dark surfaces. So I can use them on black, on craft, on regular cardstock. And you can utilize these any way you use Distress Ink. I can stamp with them, stencil with them, blend with them, emboss with them. So I can stamp and emboss. But when I wet them, that's where I start creating this cool oxidized magic. And this just shows you the comparison of the dye version of that color and the oxide version. So that would be spiced marmalade, fossilized amber, get into cracked pistachio, look at peeled paint. Oh man, they're just so good when you're mixing this up. Now, let's take you through kind of the whole principle as to how this works together. So I mentioned that this was a dye and pigment ink fusion. I've been stamping for many years and quite honestly, I don't like pigment ink. I've never used it, hate it, think it's gross, don't like the squishiness of a foam pad, don't like the stickiness of glycerin. It's just a mess. And you can't really blend it. It makes mud whenever you try to use colors. So the oxide is really a felt pad. So it's the same pad that's in your distress inks. So you're used to that fabric, that foam that's durable. That whole little surface is really going to be my foundation to whether I'm inking or using it. I don't have to worry about that squishiness, okay? 
It's also in a silver case, so it's easily identifable from your black case. So if you're just looking at it, you're like, oh, that's the silver one. Um, so that's really important that I wanted something that still has kind of that continuity between the ink lines. Because not only can we use oxides by themselves, we can still use them with distress ink, which I'll show you. When we stamp with them, amazing detail, even down to those skinny little lines, those little open areas, usually with a pigment ink, it would fill in those details on a stamp. It just does because it's really thick. But the oxide, it doesn't. And I can stamp on light or dark surfaces. Now when I stamp on surfaces, that's really cool also because I get a variety of looks. Now the oxides themselves, if you stamp them, great pigment ink. So if I took Crack Pistachio and stamped it, awesome color, right? Perfect. I can stamp and be done. I like it. But if I wet it, that's where the whole oxidation happens. It is reactive with water. So if I were to mist this image with water, it would oxidize. Okay? So it's going to give us that white oxidized layer. That is the look that this gives, is simply by adding water to it. So if you don't add water, you don't have to. It's a cool pigment ink. It's great. It's fast drying. You don't have to worry about it being sticky. You don't have to heat set it. But if I spray it and I get that oxidized layer, that's where, to me, the magic of oxide happens. Now, how much water you add is also going to determine how much oxidation you get. So for example, if I stamp it, it's normal, just like I stamped here. If I wet it a little bit, it'll start to oxidize. If I wet it a lot, you'll see that the dye and pigment that's in there start to separate. My dye really bleeds out, but my pigment stays behind. So if I were to do this with just distress ink and I stamped it and just sprayed it, my whole image would just wash away. It's all dye. But the pigment remains stable, the dye runs out. Really cool. That's what I like about working with uh, all of these different colors. Okay, so as I'm using these, I'm just going to talk about kind of mixing these together and creating some backgrounds. I'm going to just choose some colors, apply it right to the craft sheet. Nice. Mush Notice the difference stuff. between the plain like stamping and the oxide. One thing you want to kind of keep in mind when you're working with the oxide is this is one of those inks that you want to avoid swiping a color through a color. Okay? If you accidentally do that, so for example, if I take uh, my ink pad and maybe I swipe it through green and I get some color on there, you don't have to worry about it because you can simply wipe this off the surface and it will come off the surface and your ink pad is totally fine. Because remember, we're dealing with a felt pad, okay? It's just the fabric on top. It's not soaking in to the entire ink pad. Let's take a little bit of our grit. Of course, it's a game changer, man. So when we work with oxides, because we have a dye and pigment, we have the ability to layer color. Layer in a new way. These two tags are exactly the same colors. This is done in distress ink. This is done in distress oxide. Here, when I use blue, yellow, and brown, we get a lot of green because those dyes are going to mix and it's going to make green. But my oxides, you see a lot more of that blue sitting on the top because now we have a pigment in the mix. Game changer. So we're going to add some water to this because, of course, it is reactive with water, so we want to get things going. And we'll take our surface. We're just going to start with a print. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. You just <laughs> be happy with it. You won't like the first layer. It may not cover everything, and that doesn't really matter. In the world of inking, it's important to remember this. If we want to blend color, that's wet on wet. If we want to layer color, that's wet on dry. If you do not dry a layer in between, everything will blend together. So if I took that tag and I just kept putting it in there and putting it in there, all my colors will blend and you will have mud. Okay? But because I want to build onto this, I need to layer it, which means I need to dry it. Not completely, but dry enough that when I go back in with color, that color is going to sit on the top as a layer. Now, oxides are very cool because we can layer a lot of different colors, and it's always reactive. So even though I'm drying this, anytime I go in with water, even drops of water, you can see that my ink is going to react. And it starts out very wet looking, and you can tell when it dries, it'll kind of haze over. That's where it creates that oxidized effect. And you can see up here, it's drying. See how it's starting to, there we go. So it goes from wet to that oxidized layer. Pretty cool. It's like magic. Watch it happen right before your eyes. People are commenting online. They can't wait to try it. They bet really everyone's cool. minds are doing somersaults. Yeah. It's, it's very, very cool. It's a great way to kind of uh, work with our colors. So here, same thing. I'm just going to go in with another layer. And let's dry this up. It just gets better. Because remember, we're dealing with a dye and pigment. So if these were dyes and you kept going in with that stress, you'd be like, 
should stop. Yeah, I should probably stop. I won't stop. I'm going to keep that. I'm going to add in, again, a few more drips of water, just to keep building some layers. And let's go in and add some pink and some yellow to this. Why not? So, I'm going to wipe this up. Even though at home I probably wouldn't, but I'm not on it. I'm here. So, we're going to add the color. Here, I'll take a little bit of worn lipstick. Let's throw in a little bit of fossilized amber. And we'll add some color. There we go. So now we'll add some pink to the top. Maybe we'll add a little bit of yellow in between. And we'll be able to oxidize this. And what's cool is you're going to see that worn lipstick is drawing pink on the top, even over that dark red. That's fantastic. My yellow is drawing yellow even over the blue, where the whole thing should be turning green. Because we have that dye and pigment. And every layer, I can continue to break through. Ridiculous fat focus. Just crazy. And I'm even going to blend. And blend the outside <laughs> too. Just to show you that you don't always have to use it wet on wet. You can go in and still use our blending tool to blend around the edges. So our surface itself, very smooth, very soft, very oxidized. You can see that the more ink layers you get, the more that surface looks actually mm. oxidized. And you would think that it's chalky, Gorgeous. that it's going to wipe off on your fingers. It doesn't come off, but it's very suede. You can touch any of these backgrounds and feel really how soft you feel. Feel of vision. Tim, yeah, can you answer really a question cool. from Wendy? Absolutely. Wendy Malice says, is it the only, the top layer that's reactive to water? I'm wondering why the layers underneath don't all blend with the top. Voila. Dye and pigment. So anytime we have pigment, the pigment part is going to be stable. The dye is what remains fugitive. And because it has both, we have a layer that's solid and a layer that's blending. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have the ability to continue to layer without re-wetting the base. But the more water we add to it, if I kept adding water, you would get that dye that's going to start seeping out. So okay. that's what's interesting about this fusion. We've got the movability of dye, but kind of the permanent factor of a pigment. So the ability to continue to layer colors without re-wetting the entire thing, that's the formulation of oxide, which is what makes it so crazy to me. I can even go in with my oxides and blend. So even when I'm blending over Ooh. the top of this, I adding like vintage photo, it's really layering over the top as a color, a nice color. And I'll show you the difference because if I were to blend with my Distress inks as part of a layer, my dyes, because they are translucent, they're not gonna show up as kind of true to color as vintage photo. This has a very kind of uh, warm, kind of rusty look. But if I'm going in with my dye ink of the same color, you can see that it goes on much darker oh, because yeah. the dyes are translucent. It's just effective. So, so even cool. blending with the oxide creates a much softer kind of glow around the project. And even those layers, every single time, we'll be able to go in and I'm just going to add a couple of drips of water. Just wait a second. Wait for it to mix thing. Yep. And dry. Now, I am working on mixed media heavy stock. That's one thing to keep in mind uh, as I'm doing the demo. So you'll notice that Throughout this, no matter how much water and heat I've added, my paper is staying flat. Mm -hmm. um, where normally when we work with the manila tag, our manila tag curls up right away. Another important factor is the color difference between a manila tag and a heavy stock tag, mm -hmm. right? It's much lighter and much more durable. It's just a great surface when it comes to inking. So let's talk about using oxides with your inks. It gives us a whole different look because oxides with themselves create these beautiful soft backgrounds, but if you add any Distress ink into the mix, the dyes are going to be the ones that really take over our background. And that's cool. So let's say we wanted a background, we really wanted to see blue in it, okay? We didn't want just a little bit, we wanted to see a lot of blue because our project was gonna have blue. I'm not sure why, not sure why it matters, but for you, maybe you just really wanted this to match. Okay, I'm gonna add just a few shades, a couple of different blues and teals, a little bit of pine needles I think will be great. And then we'll do the rest with oxide. So here we'll add a little bit of brown, that would be good. We'll add a little bit of fossilized amber. Let's add some faded jeans. Not much to this. Maybe we're going to add a little bit of wilted violet. That would be great. Okay, next we're going to wet this. Now again, we have oxides on the outside, ink on the inside, just because that's how I put them there, not because it's part of the technique, but just so you understand. And I'm gonna go in and do the same thing. I'm just gonna add my first layer. 
And even though I missed a spot, don't go in there. <laughs> you know you want to. You want to go back in. Question about when the products will be out in market? Oxides, February. February. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and dry that layer. Yeah. And then I'm going to go so back. So pretty, isn't it? And mm -hmm. we're going to add some of that. So we're going to go ahead and start dipping around into the oxides. Same thing as I'm drying this, adding a little bit of water to that. And you can see in there that kind of swirl of yellow, that's mm -hmm. because we have fossilized amber. So yellow is going to show yellow. But if it was a yellow dye, it would just be swallowed up. Hello, Christina Werner. I was just talking about how amazingly talented you are <laughs> and how you color. And you're my muse, and I just watch you, wishing someday I could color like you, if only for one dye. <laughs> right? You did. Yeah. You did indeed. I wish. I wish I wish. All right. Here we're going to add another layer. We're going to put a little bit of fossilized amber up there. But because I've got ink on the inside, you can see that color that's really always coming through, right? Mm -hmm. That dye is going to dominate. So don't just think it's an all or nothing. Don't think, oh, because I got these, I need to not have these. They really work well together. <laughs> In fact, this is how I like to work with them because I'm able to get really the punch of color that I want with the great oxidized layer that I want in, in the tones that I want it to be as well. That purple is very soft in my background. Again, adding layers of color. And let's say just because, let's add a little bit of red over the top. Okay. Here's a scary thought. Someone wants you to have a live camera on all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here I've gone in with some fire brick oxide. And again, don't judge it until it dries because you think, oh, it's not really going to show up. And as it dries, you start, you're going to get that red oxidized layer right over the top of that green. And the more you go in, the more it's going to oxidize. So I can even take off some of that and I have the ability to go back in on the bottom. Here's a couple of finished tags. I'll just step over for a minute and say hello. I'm Margie Kemper. I'm at the Creativation Trade Show with the Craft and Hobby Association in Phoenix, Arizona. I'm in the Ranger Ink booth with Tim Holtz. These are some tags he made using the new Distress Oxide ink pads. I'll bring you back over now. If you feel that your friends or peers would enjoy this, please share it. Thank you. This is our beautiful background. So let's stamp on it. Are we? That's fine. We'll do some stamping. I think I'll stamp, I'll stamp some butterflies on it. That will be good. We'll take the black one. I'm glad you're we'll enjoying them, Bernay. Pretty cool. We'll stamp a couple of them while I have them out. So the stamp platform. Oh, yeah, this uh, thing is really cool. Stamping surface. It's got an eight and a half by eight and a half. Uh, stampable surface. So what's nice is that it's not only good for cards and tags, but if you are a scrapbooker and you stamp on a 12 by 12 page, the center of a 12 by 12 page is 6 by 6. That would be here. So if you're working with a stamping tool that is 6 inches by 6 inches, it can't stamp in the center because the center will be off. So it has to be bigger. That's the center, so it allows me a large image even in the middle of the page. Uh, this is designed very simple. It's designed for stampers in mind. It's got a foam base, some grips, very sturdy. It's actually two components. It's got our top acrylic plate. This is a solid molded acrylic. There are no etch lines. This grid is molded into it. It also has a fully magnetic base. Okay, so the entire base is magnetic. When we go to work with it, it's pretty simple. Are you working with a rubber stamp or are you working with a clear stamp? You decide. If you're working with a rubber stamp, you should say the word rubber. You lock it into the channel and close it. And once it's in there, it is in there until you stand it up and take it back out of the channel. All right? So we're going to work with a rubber stamp. So we're going to open this up, place down our background with our couple of magnets. We'll take a couple of stamps, decide where we want to put them. All right, that will work fine. And we're going to close this and we're going to pick up our stamps. Next, we're going to take our ink. And because this is a solid acrylic surface, I can go in and really be aggressive when I'm making my stamp, just like I would if it was a stamp block. Now I'll show you a couple of ways that we can do it. We could ink that up traditionally. That would be predictable. But let's say we wipe off most of the ink from the ink pad. So our first layer, we're going to intentionally go light. You guys, check this I'm out. I'm just going to stamp this out. 
This is really and something. Right now, this is really faded. So now I'm just going to go in, add a little bit more ink, just in areas. Again, I'm not doing the entire image, and I'm going to stamp another layer. Now I'm going to go more into the center of the butterflies only, and I'm going to add another layer. By doing this, this is creating depth from an image by going from a very faded look to a very intense look. And I can even make the bodies of the butterflies even that much more intense. And because this is a nice acrylic platform, whether you're just a traditional stamper or a CPR stamper, <laughs> either way, you know who you are. Yeah, I to just think they need to do this every know, time. Right. Either we way, you're going to always have great images. And this is what's cool about it. If you look at those butterflies, you can see that the wings fade, but the body becomes darker. And that is because I chose how much of that tone I wanted from my same ink pad. So instead of just doing black ink, black ink, black ink, wipe most of it off and then build where you want. So yeah. if you're creating any type of stamped image, this gives you a lot more depth instead of just having one solid black image. And that's one way to do it. There's another cool way that we can work with this. You can go ahead and pick that one. Let's talk about words. If I'm stamping, if I'm stamping with words, we're going to take a butterfly and we're going to take a word stamp. So let's just do, let's say we want to do, I don't know. Yes, Tamara, it is wow. It's wow. Okay. Let's take this one. Thanks for sharing, Christine. Thoughts and theories. Okay. We're going to take these two. All right. So I'm going to do a butterfly and I'm going to do a stamp that just says thoughts and theories, just to talk about that. All right. So this is what we want to stamp. So I'm going to put this on. Whenever I have a word stamp, even though Stampers Anonymous is an amazing stamp company, the best in the world, right, Ted? Yes. Whenever you're indexing rubber, it cannot always be perfect. Sometimes the index is not completely registered with the rubber. So what I like is that whenever I have words, I'll always flip my platform around. I'm going to look at the grid and just make sure that my words are going to run parallel to one of those grid lines. Okay. If for whatever reason your word, because that's what's going to stamp, not the index, but the rubber. So if you're like, oh, I look pretty good, or I need to adjust it, this one's perfection, no adjustment needed. But if it was off, it gives you the opportunity to adjust it on your grid. That's why, to me, this is where the grid needs to be. This is where I'm stamping. This is where the paper is. Who cares what's there? Your paper is already secure. It's not going anywhere. And Chip, what, what is the name of the product? This is called the Stamp Platform. Stamp Platform. Yep. So here I'm just going to go in and ink it. This is shipping in April. Yeah, this one you got to wait. Any time to save up for that. I know. I know. This is the one where it's like, oh, please. Yeah. So here I'm just going to stamp that. Again, I'm going to go in one more layer with the butterfly. Maybe I want to make my words a little bit more intense. And I have the ability to go in and stamp that. That's pretty, That's pretty cool. Yep. Every time, perfect. So now let me show you a technique with the platform. That's really cool. All right. So now I'm going to just clean off my stamp. Okay. Get rid of some of this crown. You're so, being called a master and a magician. Oh, oh absolutely. And I'm just magical. All right. Let's just show real quick on watercolor. So I always like to show on watercolor cardstock the ability to create really crisp imagery on textured paper. That seems to be the nice uh, some great surfaces, but we want to always stamp our detail stamp. So this is watercolor cardstock. It's got some texture on it. And I'm going to show you working with a clear stamp. So if I'm working with a clear stamp, I flip it over to where it says clear. That's it. Now I'll just take my clear stamp. I'll place it down. Close this up. And that's all I need to do to go from a clear stamp to a rubber stamp. Did you put this in the two sides? The thickness, because uh, yeah. a clear stamp is thin. Yeah, just the channel. So a clear stamp is thinner than a rubber stamp because of the cushion. So this allows me to get that nice detail. Wipe this off. And now I can take, for example, a flower, position it right where I want it to be, angle it exactly how I want it to be. And same thing. Ink this up and stamp it. And because we have that whole bumpy textured watercolor paper, it gives us the ability to really go in and layer this again and again and again. Such because, detail. Oh man. That's cool. And when you're layering exactly. it, yeah, you would think that if this sucker wasn't lined up, this stamp would have just shot me down in my demo. So it would have been like, you should have chose a bolder image. Right. Um, but this 
we have totally crisp detail on beautiful. a textured surface. Lots of hearts uh, and lakes. And one last question. Uh, can you use the oxides color. like a watercolor? Absolutely. All you right. Can use a water brush and watercolor with it. So let's do watercolor. Let's do watercolor with the platform. Okay? So this is pretty cool. So I'm going to do watercolor with this. I'm going to use, let's use our butterfly stamp. So I'm going back to a rubber stamp. Simple, rubber. Close that up. And now I'm going to turn my platform for this technique. I'm going to use my watercolor paper. This is really great for the people that, uh, like me, can't color. You know, I'm not the Christina Werners of the bunch, but I like the look of watercolor. But sometimes uh, I'm just afraid that it's not going to end well. So let's take that stamp and we'll go in with our markers. Let's take a series of markers. I'm just going to take my distress markers. You can use any kind of water-based marker for this if you want, but this is this is a pretty cool way to uh, certainly add a lot of color to a stamp image. So what I'm going to do is just take some color and I'm just going to scribble it directly on my stamp. You may have seen a technique where we color a marker, I'm um, sorry, color a stamp with markers, puff on it, or even spray yeah. it and stamp it. But usually when we're coloring with a lot of colors, we kind of forget where we colored or we put too many colors together and it ends up turning into mud. Well, this is going to allow me to build my watercolor one layer at a time. So now I can go in and add a little bit of yellow here. Maybe I want to add a little bit of blue to the outline. Spray it. it. Wipe this off. Maybe I want to pick up a little bit of orange in there. Perfect. I can see exactly where I want a color to be and what color I want it to be. Maybe I want a little bit more a red on the upper tip, so I can add some red there. And maybe I want to add some purple down here. No. And maybe I want a little green on the body. And then maybe I want to add, let's add a little bit of blend right along that line. So I just added a few lines of color. Again, spray that. Stamp it. And now we're really building layer. I'm going to say, you know what? I want more blue in there. Okay. Thanks. Let's take a little bit of peacock feathers. Now I'm going to add a little Here's a finished one that Tim did a few a minutes ago. So just to recap, I'm Margie Kemper. I'm at the Creativation Trade Show in Phoenix, Arizona in the Ranger booth. Let me give a little flip there. I'm so glad so many of you were able to tune in. If you're enjoying this, click on the link below to share so more of your friends can see and keep leaving your comments. I'm not able to respond while Tim is demoing because there's a big crowd and I don't want to be disrespectful. But if you have any questions for him, I'll be here for another couple of minutes. Feel free to ask. I know there's a bit of a lag, um, but if I see your question and I can ask it, I will. All right, great. Yes, great seeing you there, Tamara. I did see Joe. I see Joe is on too. That's awesome. Teresa, I'm really glad you all tuned in. If you're new to me, go ahead and like the page and click get notifications and you'll uh, get more information when I'm, or you'll get a notification when I'm filming again here, which will be tomorrow. Also, you can find me at margiekemper.com. Um, Tamara, I don't know the retail price. I would check that on the Ranger site. I assume it's very similar to the Distress Ink Pad price. Okay, I'm gonna switch you back over to Tim. Terrific, thank you so much. Enjoyed it. Okay, folks, I'm just going to give you a quick walk around the booth. You can see the new colors of distress markers. You already saw those ink pads, but let me show you the samples of them. Are they gorgeous? Yes, they are gorgeous. I know that stamping gadget is really something, Maria. And here are the examples of the oxide. So this one is stamping, this one is misting, this one is spraying, and this last one is the full background. All right, I'm going to wrap it up. Thanks again for watching. Hope you have a great day, and I will see you back on the show floor tomorrow. Take care.